All right, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to How to Be a Superhero, um, the show. Um, I am Michael Tomano, and I'm also author of How to Be a Superhero, the book. And today I am very honored to have uh, Casey Wilkinson. Casey, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, hello, <laughs> yeah, hello. Um, and would you like to give us your superhero origin story? Oh. My superhero origin story has to do with a, an introverted kid that had too many art supplies and <laughs> you know, lots of lots of quiet time, tons of library books, and uh, almost way too many library books. If that's possible, they are free. But uh, <laughs> I started drawing uh, at, like little rabbits with dresses on them because I couldn't draw human heads and. Uh, just reading way too much about animals and that's how I'm here where I am drawing a lot of weird animals all the day. Yeah I guess we should probably mention that you are a, a fantastic artist. Oh yeah I'm a the illustrator I do a little bit of painting I do uh, quite a bit of digital work on the iPad on Procreate now uh, I do have plans for kids book coming up I, I do uh pattern and surface design stuff too for you know like it's just whatever whatever floats my boat on a given day usually I think it's so cool too how, how you have so much apparel that has your your art on it now oh yeah that's partially just really good about the internet there's so many places where you can upload artwork and they will print on demand on things so I'm on Redbubble I'm on Society6. I have my own little Etsy shop, which I gotta, I gotta restock. Um, <laughs> but there's so many places that will actually do the printing and the shipping side of things for artists now. So it makes it a lot easier for us to be able to make a little bit of money off of uh, things. That's really cool. Um, Cause yeah, I remember you have like, you had pillows and towels and mugs. Oh yeah. The one, uh, Redbubble just, they're going to have uh, desk mats and mouse pads coming soon. They just added hats in recently. So fun times. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, what, one of my favorite things about your, your art is that uh, it's, it's animals, but it's, it's animals like in fun situations and with sometimes like different costumes and they're very creative. Oh, it's usually like animals kind of doing people things. Um, and I, I made a set of paper dolls that were hermit crabs, uh, but they're not really hermit crabs. They're like dressed up as famous people. I have a Bob Ross hermit crab, a Frida Kahlo <laughs> one. Yeah, you know, like there's, uh, I don't know if there's one with an afro or not, but there's, you know, there's just a lot of uh, party fun time hermit crabs that you can kind of scramble up their little outfit and their, in their shell. Uh, animals in Christmas sweaters you know, animals preparing to do things or like, you know, doing regular human stuff and, you know, fun, I, whimsical. I like the idea of, of party time hermit crabs. That's, that's not <laughs> something you, you hear every day. The idea was, I think I was doing a challenge on Instagram that was about uh, like environmentalism, about like reduce, reuse, recycle type of things. And so I was like, at first I was like, oh, I could do how, you know, like the villagers in Animal Crossing, how you can like hand uh, costumes across to people. But then I was talking about hermit crabs with a friend of mine and I'm like, and they're like, why don't the hermit crabs hand the stuff off? And I was like, Pfft. and then I'm like, why don't I make them into paper dolls? That way I can like mix and match them. I actually have one on my, on my bulletin board right here, this little, this little crab that was uh, colored in. I'll have to see if you can see him. Oh, awesome. Little crab. It's just paint, printed on regular uh, printer paper. So it's a little, it's warping a little bit. I think I actually have, I have a little suit. Oh, let me see. Oh, here's a whole one. This one's not colored in, but this is a, a witch's hat. That's got a little, got <laughs> spider crab on it. And then the crabs kind of fit onto the hat and then they have little costumes that go onto them that's There's so a, cool that, that was a lot of fun to make i have two different crabs and they have like four different outfits each and you can download them in my etsy shop for like i think it's like a 
it's like four bucks or something like that. And you can just print them out, cut them out, color them, and assemble them however you want. It's a fun rainy day activity. It sounds like it would be a lot of fun for kids to like dress up like stuffed animals and stuff with them. Yeah. There's a lot of, plus you could, you know, once you have the crab, you can kind of like take tracing paper and you could make your own outfits for it and your own shells and everything. So it gives them that kind of ability to stretch out on it. A I witch, love- a adder. <laughs> I love how you how you've taken your art and you know been able to use your your Etsy shop to to actually turn it into into a, a bit of a living too. Yeah, it's it's definitely it pays for itself right now. Any of my like art supplies are paid for by money I make off of my Redbubble shop or Etsy shop, and even a little bit of extra spending money on top of that. It's not a it's not a ton, but it's it's enough to make sure that I can kind of like stay home here and be a little bit more available to the kiddos and a little bit more supportive of my kids in school right now. And hopefully over time, I can build it even more. I I love that so much. I mean, because that's really any creative dream is to actually have their creative work, make money to pay for anything, really, because it's not easy. It's, It's kind of difficult at first anyway. Yeah, at first, just getting the ball rolling is really difficult, which is one of the reasons why I love like my TikTok artist community so much is that some of the stuff that I've picked up over the couple of years that I've been running is very helpful to people that's just starting out. And I can kind of like put out a little bit of that stuff to help people have an easier time of getting onto it than I did. And that's fun because I also get to see all of their beautiful artwork and sometimes they have pointers that I missed. Yeah, so we're always better as a community. I think that's so cool that you have that community on TikTok as well, because for me, you know, someone that that's not super familiar with TikTok, like I wouldn't think that that'd be the kind of thing that's on TikTok because, you know, I think of TikTok of like, you know, just people dancing like maniacs, you know, (laughs) and uh, um, so it's pretty cool that they have that. Yeah, the art community is a really weird little corner of TikTok that it's like, in the beginning, people are just posting, oh, this is my artwork, this is what I do, you know, like pairing it up with the music and everything, or like complaining about something that's typical to art, like, oh, people don't want to pay me for it, or, you know, like, people ask, tell me I can only, I can't even draw a stick figure, and uh, (laughs) that's a typical one, Uh, everybody can draw a stick figure. (laughs) just about uh but it was really funny because some people were like well we constantly get pushed down by almost every social media algorithm right as an artist it feels like you really have to shout and you really have to push your stuff in order to be seen so a couple of the artists on tiktok were like why don't we all just follow each other watch each other's videos over and over again, give each other likes, tune into each other's lives when we get to that point, you know, like, and support each other, buy each other's stuff a little bit, do videos with each other's stickers in it, you know, and in each other's products in it. And we can, you know, all help each other out and, you know, rising tide lifts all ships. And so you had this big movement at first of getting all the artists together and now we're slowly you know also still building because new people are joining every day and or you'll you'll have missed an entire pocket of artists until you happen to hit their their for you page on there so it's always fun you're always finding little little groups of them to like onboard (laughs) like what do you do (laughs) that's so cool that's so cool. I'm gonna have to bring my uh, um my my stick figures to the table. Yeah, bring the stick figures. <laughs> my, I think what my what stick got, figures. I think what got me the first time getting a bunch of people was somebody was actually had posted that they see people doing such awesome work, right? And they 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 say to themselves what's the point of it I'm not that good why am I doing it why don't I just quit and I was like don't you freaking dare like (laughs) I took their video and I was like 
no, 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 no. It's not about how good other people are. It's about the fun you have doing it. It's about exploring and making messes. And I want you to go and make something ugly, like right now. <laughs> I could go and make something ugly. Sometimes and that's all my thing, my push. Sometimes those are the most fun things too, because they're they're really creative. Well, that got me to break out of like I wasn't doing watercolor when uh, when I started posting on TikTok. I was just doing mainly digital artwork. I would I would draw by hand, you know, like occasionally do ink, like pen and ink stuff. But watercolor was always the bane of my existence because it has uh, it's unpredictable. It has its own rules. It behaves its own way. It behaves the way that water flows, right? So you can't control it as easily. You have to give up some of that control. You have to be okay with a, a certain level of mess. And talking to other people about getting over their need for, for being good meant that I had to take my own advice. You know? <laughs> I had to go ahead and take those watercolors that I've had all the time sitting on the shelf unused and actually attempt to use them again. So I got myself a better set of watercolors. You know, I, I, I tried the old cheap ones I had. I got myself a little better set and I sat down and I listened to what some other people were saying, how they prepped their paper and those sort of things. And now I love it. I've got uh, three, I've got, a, I've got a fourth set of watercolors on its way to me right now. Cool. Actually, actually, that might be five. It might be five. I didn't count the metallics that I got. So w what you've uh, made me think of is, is how important it is to just embrace the chaos. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I refer to myself occasionally as a chaos monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about uh, weird connections between things, having a, an array of different uh, things going on at any given time, like even just reading. I don't read just fiction books. I'll read nonfiction. I'll read historical. I'll watch documentaries. I'll watch cartoons. Uh, you know, like I'll watch whatever's trendy or sci-fi and fantasy. And then sometimes it's just how you your brain gets all that information and it jumbles it up, and then you can pick chunks out and just smash them together, <laughs> make a new thing. I think that needs to be a, a character in a, in one of my stories or something like the the chaos monkey. That sounds like a really fun character to play with. Yeah, that is fun. Maybe I'll make a sticker of chaos monkey. I already have. Yeah. <laughs> if I want in every game. You and I can both use it. Okay. <laughs> sounds good. Or or even collaborate on, on some of it. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, I love collaborations, man. I've been getting there more with uh with having that community too, which is having communities great because you've got that ability to collaborate. Like right now I've got, I think I've got a giveaway going on TikTok. Yeah, I'm gonna pull at the end of the month, but it's a pay it forward giveaway that one of my fellow artists on there started. And what they did was they, you know, had people enter for it. They pulled a couple of names and they sent those people two pieces of artwork, right? The person who gets it gets to keep one and then they have to add one of their own and send it back out. Cool. So the next person in the chain gets to pick from either one of that person's artwork or my piece that I added in. And it keeps hopefully going and going and going. The point of where people get a little bit of free art from different people. That's so cool. I love that. <laughs> And so one thing, one thing we're definitely going to make sure to do is um, get all your information um, in the description of this uh, video, um, because this all sounds like really cool and something that would be great for, for everyone to link up with. Yeah. And if there's young artists, I think TikTok's age range is like 13 and up for the, for the user agreement. I don't care how good you are. I'll follow you back if you have art videos, period. End of story. It doesn't matter where you are on your journey. I will follow you back. If I see your videos, I'll like them. I'll watch them all the way through. I'll even do comments on them about what you're doing well. Unless you ask for a critique, you don't get a critique from me. <laughs> <laughs> all you get is positive sunshine. 
<laughs> and so and and so i think uh, um you know a, a great moral of of all this is that everyone can be a, a chaos monkey so just just be a chaos monkey just just make stuff um like as as you've probably seen my art i i am really bad at at, at drawing and uh, but my drawings are actually so bad that a lot of people really enjoy them um so i actually have a lot of fans of my art which is pretty hilarious it's it's basically the simplification your stuff is just very simple so it's easy to relate to you know like <laughs> yeah. not, like yeah. it's, it's the same reason why people relate to cartoons better than they relate to hyper realistic stuff hmm. you know like just it's easier to like imagine anybody in that position as opposed to you know that character doesn't look like me you know and I guess with my stuff too, people figure, you know, if, if I can do it, you know, anyone can do it. I think yours also like hinges more on the message too, because you obviously have like a point of view and a message that you're trying to convey with it. So the pictures are nice for that, but the bulk of where they get the heart from is the message. And in my goofy character smiles and crazy hair <laughs> <laughs> we all have goofy smiles and we all have crazy hair you know like well most of us <laughs> maybe that's why my maybe that's why my characters have have all that all that crazy hair you know it's uh, um it's because i can't have it you know like they get to have it yeah that's why all of my characters are animals is because i don't want to be human anymore <laughs> <laughs> I, I get to live vicariously through my characters. Yeah, but like, just for example, I mean, I keep, uh, this is this is a friend of mine's artwork right here. I keep, I have a bunch of uh, random uh, TikTok people's artwork that I have to either hang up or I have hanging in my office in my little studio space. So I got little reminders of my peeps. <laughs> I love that. You know, I, I have a lot of um artwork that the kids have created for me and i do have some of it like around my desk but i think i need to just like bust it out and just like really just get it all around my room and Take just a whole big wall out of it you know yeah. like a big wall out of it yeah you know? and i i love kids creativity because it's just so like it's so outside any box like there is no box there is no like, box they haven't been given box they haven't been tried to be put in boxes yet so they have no constraints whatsoever that's one of the reasons why, like, with entry level artists, like the young ones coming on and they're like, oh, I'm not that good yet. But no, you have all the cool ideas. Like, right. <laughs> don't ever, yeah. don't ever tell you they're bad, you know, like, just, just make and you'll get better at the technical stuff. And as long as you're not beat down too much, you'll keep with the weird ideas. Like, come on, let's, you know. Yeah, because really the the weird ideas too are are what separate you and, and help you get noticed because it is like there's there is like a lot out there and you know sometimes a lot of it gets kind of similar. And when you when you can have something that's creative and different, you know, that really stands out. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of noise. And so you're just trying to find what speaks to people. And if it's something that everybody's seen stuff exactly like everywhere, then it's just going to meld in. Absolutely. Find your own tune, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. And then you'll find people that you can harmonize with. It's not about finding other yeah. people the same tune as you. It's just finding other people that play, you know, similarly. They can give you a bass track or a little boom, 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 boom. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Oh, that's great. And and I really love the idea of of artists coming together in, in a community because I normally think of it as kind of like a um, you know, kind of like a solo thing, you know, like where you just have like an artist that's kind of like just like off in the corner of their room, just working on their on their masterpiece or whatever. But um, I love this idea of um instead of like doing exactly the opposite and being social, like and sharing artwork and you know everything being together and, and almost kind of like a joint massive collaboration yeah like art can be very lonely and i think that's one of the stories that we tell about art that might not necessarily be helpful or even truthful uh in most cases even people like van gogh who you would consider like 
you know, Vincent van Gogh would have been like the consummate artist off on his own. Uh, even he had a time period where he shared studio space with Cezanne. You know, they didn't quite get along with each other by the end of it, but you know, like, and that's for other reasons. He was, you know, suffering some, from some mental health issues. Uh, but in almost every case, with almost every school of art, you have groups of people who would get together and share studio spaces, talk about paintings with each other, give each other critiques, give each other feedback, uh, put on shows together, you know, like, and that's the way it's always been. But for some reason, we have this story of the lone struggling artist out there as some sort of myth. And it really doesn't, I don't think it helps people. I really don't. I agree. And you reminded me too of a lot of uh, writers like Tolkien and um, trying to like a, well, a whole yes. bunch of them that, that would yeah. get together with other famous writers and like have, have coffee together. And uh, um, yeah, they're so they dressed up as polar bears and went to a party that wasn't a costume party together. <laughs> oh, that, that's a piece of art, art you did. No, Tolkien and C.S. Lewis went to a party together and they dressed as polar bears, but it wasn't a costume party. What? <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah. that's a great story. They were really weird together. They were like really so good funny. who ripped on each other's work frequently, and but yeah, also supported each other quite a bit. So, I mean, that's what I, that's what I want out of life is that kind of, I, I love having people that are willing to join me on my weird chaos and, you know, we're going to go play and have some fun and cheer each other on and occasionally give each other a little bit of trouble. <laughs> and that makes everybody's work so much better too. Oh yeah. I mean, I've gotten so much more work done because I have people to show it to that I know want to see it. Right. Like these are yeah. friends that are going to support me, even if they're not going to be paying for it I don't feel as if I'm a burden to them I feel as if being there and sharing and talking about things helps you know like that it improves the entire atmosphere and that having them there does the same so I try to communicate it that to them that I enjoy them as well and I've gotten so much more work done since like March of last year specifically because of having that community wow and sometimes Sometimes it's just people being doing like live streaming on TikTok of drawing. And I do a live stream every Monday morning at around like 9 a.m., 8, 9 a.m. And uh, that starts off my week. I do a duet with a fellow artist and we sit and we chat while we're working and it sets off our entire work week. We get more done when we're sitting there working parallelly and kind of talking a little bit back and forth and talking to the people in the chat. And it's just, it's similar to what ADHD people do with body doubling, where you might work better if somebody else is also working quietly in the room at the same time, because you've hmm. got some that you can mirror the behavior of a little bit. So wow, it helps. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Like all all this, you know, all this world that I didn't, you know, really know existed in the artist community it's it's very inspiring to me and uh i i want to get in on it with with some of my writing because yeah. i need to get back to writing and um and honestly that would probably be good good motivation the writers do late night word count pushes sometimes too i follow a couple of writers on there and they're always doing lives that are like oh it's a slumber party slash word count push you know where they're trying to get like their two thousand words the day done during the last two hours of the night and uh, it looks like a lot of fun. I haven't gone out on the writer's ones as much because I'm normally doing, doing the art stuff. But uh, there is, there's a great book talk community there. I've seen some, uh, some kid lit people, some children's literature people on there that are trying to like, kind of like show people the ropes of like how to get into the industry, like the right way, how to self-publish, how to, you know, like, and there's just, a, it's a wealth of information. And if you get into a little like, look and start picking up people that you recognize frequently you can you'll fit right in <laughs> that's so cool you're weird and you're positive and and people like that you'll fit right in 
Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like it'll be a good fit. And I think it's really good for people to know that there are these communities out here or, you know, like out, out in the world to to be a part of. Oh, yeah. And if you, I mean, if you find me on there and you just get you're just getting started as an artist and you follow me, I follow you back. You can send me instant messages of stuff that you've just posted. Be like, hey, can you help me out with this? I'll, I'll direct some people over to you. I just did it today because I found somebody, somebody followed me that only had like, they just started their account. They had a couple of videos up. They had one follower when they followed me. They had like three, like later in the day. And I just decided to push their video to a bunch of my people. And I'm like, hey, this is too good for them only to have like three followers. Like, can we, can we drag them in, please? Can we just like, just pull them right in? <laughs> cool. That's so, that's so nice of you. I love that. People are trying to shout each other out. And so that like different groups can start melding into a little bit of a, you know, bigger one. And I, I find that, um, you know, when you help somebody out like that, that it, 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 it comes back to you too. Yeah. And that's part of it. We're constantly having that give and take. Not, I'm not expecting too much out of people. You know, I don't expect everybody to share my videos or comment on everything that I make. I, I just expect them to hang out and keep making stuff. Cool. <laughs> well, that's, that's so great. They're a cool crew. Bunch of weirdos. Met so many uh, interesting people from all over the place. And you never know. Got a couple of Australian friends on there. <laughs> They're across the way. Uh, one in Finland. Netherlands. Yeah, there were a couple of German and Russian ones starting out. I have to, I have to see if I can catch back up with them. But <laughs> Well, so... I, I think all this is is a fantastic segue into what I think is one of your greatest superpowers. And so because so first we talked about, of course, you have the creativity as your superpower, but that you make that very obvious with how talented you are at it. And um, like and it's so this one, I think, is a little bit, um, you know, maybe people don't notice it as as much. And I think it's really, really important. Um, and so one thing that I really, really like about you and that I've always liked about you is that you have um, like a very um, like a like a, a childlike like playfulness to you. And I mean that like in in the highest possible form. Oh, I take a high compliment. <laughs> yeah, because it's it's honestly something that that I need to like move back to more. Um, and so you just you always have like a very a very positive disposition, like a very playful disposition. And, uh, you know, it really brightens up the atmosphere. Yeah. I have my times where I get down and I get angry and I get even a little bit like hopeless about how the world is going. But then I also remember that there's still like, there's still like the craziest things in this world, you know, like there's so much weirdness and wonder and I'm learning like little new things every day. And those things are amazing. And if I can kind of like keep to that side more to, than the other side, the other side's also useful occasionally when I need to get stuff done or when something's really wrong that needs to get fixed. Absolutely. But for the most part, if I lose sight of what a wonder it is just to be here now and be able to experience things the way that I experience them then what's the point? <laughs> I'm like, what? I completely agree. I have um, I yeah, see probably color better than some other people's. Like, why am I not staring at sunsets and fires and, you know, like plants and beautiful flowers and just sitting there and spending a little bit of time doing that and enjoying it? What are millions of years of evolution being used for if I don't do that? You know? <laughs> well, I, I think it's, I think it's really great that, you know, you're able to, um, first of all, you know, recognize the kind of like the, the more negative emotions and, you know, like when, when situation when the situations are, are, are getting kind of rough, like being able to recognize those emotions, but choosing to, you know, not stay in them. Um, cause I know for me, like everyone thinks that I'm just, 
um, well, not, I don't know if everyone, but a lot of people tell me all the time, like, oh, you're always so happy. You're always so positive. Like, like, la, 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 you know, just like that. I like, you know, wake up like on a, on a rainbow or something, you know, and, and just like the sunlight pours through and all my days are just happy and full of merriment and sunshine and rainbows. And, um, <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, it's not that way at all, you know? Um, and so I'm so glad that you, that you mentioned all, all that too. Cause, uh, um, you know, like it's, it's tough sometimes, but it's, it's so important to, to make that choice and to see like the positive and more fun side of life or however you want to word it. And, you know, cause it, it really is a choice. I think there, I, I mean, sometimes there isn't a positive side in the moment of things and you have to feel your way through those things to get through them. And it's okay to do that. And it's okay to share that with other people. Uh, if you're dwelling on it a lot, it's good to have like specific people that you can talk to that isn't crazy out in the open all the time. You know, like it's okay to say I'm, I'm frustrated with things. I am. And I'm, I'm pretty honest about it. I think when, you know, on, even on social media that it's like, I'm having a tough time right now. I'm not making that much work. There's, you know, life's getting in the way right now. Uh, sometimes I talk about whether art block is, uh, recently, whether art block is too large a blanket of a term, considering that sometimes it's not not having ideas. Sometimes it's life gets in the way. Sometimes it's, you know, like you have too many ideas. Yeah. So looking at those things, feeling your way through them, kind of figuring out the why and figuring out what you can do to change it. And sometimes you can't change it and you just have to live with it. And that sucks. But, you know, like... Well, I, I, for too long. I love how you um, how you reach out to people and, and let people know what you feel, because uh, that's a big part of the book. Um, and, and I think a, a very important superhero skill is to is to ask for help, because, um, you know, first of all, a lot of times people like to help because it gives them a sense of purpose and meaning and they, it feels good to help somebody else. And so oh, if man. you give them a chance to help you, you're actually making them feel good. But then you're also feeling good because someone's helping you. So it really works out well because uh, I know for me, sometimes I try to take on too much by myself and, and I don't ask for help. And, um, and then you're kind of just like basically stuck in your, your, your own cage and, you know, like the, the mental prison just gets like tighter and tighter and whatever. And uh, whereas like if, if I just go and like ask someone for help or say like, hey, like I'm, I'm really struggling with this issue and like just talk, out, talk it out with them. Yeah, you know, sometimes they don't even need to do any work. Sometimes it's just me putting it from my brain into words that, you know, I, I'm able to work it out. Yeah, I'll call people like, you know, like I'll, I have, I have the huge TikTok community, but I also have like close personal friends and family that I can call. And sometimes I'll be like, can you just let me talk this out? Like, I don't need any actual, like, you don't need to try <laughs> to solve it for me. I just need to know where my brain is on this thing because that's part of also being, being a little bit of like a chaos monkey means your mind's all over the place. And sometimes it's hard to figure out exactly how you feel about something at a certain time, uh, how to express it, whether or not those feelings are like an overreaction or whether you're looking at it rationally and you just want to like, kind of like throw a bunch of words out and have somebody tell you, yeah, that makes sense, you know? And you just want to say, okay, good. Now I can do something about it. You know, like, I just want to make sure that I'm not not seeing this the right way either i'm always a little i'm always a little too aware that there's different perspectives to things and it might come from the artwork side of things it might come from being a highly sensitive person you know like but i always know that there's there's more than two sides to any story you know there's I mean, artwork operates on the fact that you're trying to translate something from two dimension, from three dimensions to two frequently, or from no dimensions because it's in your brain to two or to three or to four if you add time and you have animation, you know, like so, and story, like there's so much that you can make and so much that you're gonna have to leave out in order for something to make sense. And that's why like, I mean, like Picasso with, you know, cubism where you're trying to show all three, all four sides of the cube at the same time and why that looks so weird. Conceptually, it's a really interesting idea, 
but it doesn't make sense if you like, <laughs> you know, that's not a cube anymore. It's on a flat sheet of paper. So it's, it's good to have other people to kind of get a better idea of what a situation really looks like, because it's often way more complicated than you think it is. And yeah, and, and since, um, you know, if, if it's a problem we're having or something that we're stuck with and we're so close to it, a lot of times it's, it's hard for us to see it objectively. Oh, that's the same way with art. I tell people all the time, if you're stuck on something, put it down, walk away, go take a walk, you know, go work on something else for a little while, give yourself a little bit of space and a little bit of time, and then go back and look at it because you'll look at it with fresh eyes. Then you've broken that spell of being so close up to your own work. And it's also one of the reasons why artists judge their own work so poorly. You know, we're so self-critical of our own work because we're the ones that watched us make every single mistake. We've covered up those mistakes. We've erased some of them, but we remember the person you show that finished product to knows none of that. They think you just magically made that thing just right now, just boof, it came into its existence. There's no struggle for it whatsoever. And that you're some sort of magical being, you know, and you let them believe that because that's great. <laughs> and, and it's correct in, in a sense too. I, I think all artists are, are magical beings. But I think magic, like uh, like in old fairy tales, always takes some sort of sacrifice and struggle, you know. And Absolutely. you have, you kind of have to acknowledge that you have to trade something off for magic to happen, whether that's time and you know skill building, or you know aggravation or anxiety or a little bit of depression that you're not good enough, you know, like and figuring out a way to just keep moving. You'll end up with some good work and at some point you'll look back on what you used to do look at what you're doing now and go wow that's a jump you know? <laughs> but you don't recognize it when you're doing it I like to say it's kind of like when you have kids in your family right like so if you have like nieces or nephews that you don't see every day you see them two three times a year you know maybe once a month they'll pop up and grow like an inch or two in between you seeing them their parents don't see that it's gradual they see them every day those hands are getting bigger you know like they're getting more adult like every day but you don't see it every day so it seems like it's a huge jump i feel like that's the way it is with artists with their own skill and that sometimes we can lose track of how much better we're getting that's a that's a really good point. Um, and I, I think that's, that's really something that I need to uh, keep in mind for, for myself. And uh, I, yeah, I, I think it really is easy. Well, so I, I think that that really goes along with, with the superpowers too, because it really is easy for us to um, not really realize, uh, you know, what superpowers we have, like what things that we're actually really good at. Um, because I, I know for me, like some things like, well, um, as a lot of people know, like I, one of the things I do is search engine optimization. And, um, you know, some of the things that like people like, you know, ask me about or, or I'm like, I'm, tr I'm trying to explain stuff to them and uh, things that like seemed like so, um, you know, simple to me, you know, are like these like super complicated things that, that people are like, huh, like, what are you talking about? You know, yeah. and I'm like. But I thought it's like obvious to everyone and, you know, but it really isn't. It's, it's a skill that I've built up through, through so much time that I've, I've kind of forgotten, you know, like how much of a process it's, it's really been and, and how far I've come. Yeah. And that's it too, that it's like, people be like, you're so, you're so talented. I immediately have that moment of like, it's like, it, it's skill. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of efforts. It's a lot of mistakes and garbage and messes and exploration and getting really frustrated with myself, you know, usually to the point of quitting sometimes, you know, like, and sometimes you have to take breaks and you just got to learn to rest and not quit if it's something that you value highly. And I mean, I value the being able to make weird sloth drawings so <laughs> yeah I have with what I make I actually enjoy what I make when I'm done with it for the most part and I can't I can't remember at least 
it's at least been a couple of years since I felt like something that I made, I didn't, I wasn't at least amused by. I, I think you, I think you hit a really important point on the head. Um, Cause I know, I know for me, I've, I've always tried to keep it at the forefront that anything that I make first and foremost needs to be for myself. Um, so my, the, the, the book, how to be a superhero was actually for myself first and foremost to, to help keep myself in gear, you know, help, help, help keep all those, those, those values and those ideas, um, my video games. And, um, you know, even this, this show, um, you know, first and foremost, it's, it's for me, you know, I have a lot of fun doing it and getting to, to talk to everyone and I'm, I'm learning, uh, like, it's great. You know, I hope other people like it too, but you know, um, I'm my, my number one audience. If I'm not happy, then nobody else is going to be right. <laughs> Well, and, and also too, I've, I realized that, um, you know, you can try to like cater to all these different audiences, but at the end of the day, you really don't know what they want. Um, but you can, you can try to make something that you want and, and you enjoy, um, you know, versus trying to just like pitch to like essentially an imaginary audience. And it helps keep you motivated too. Cause if you, if you're enjoying oh, what, yeah. you're, what you're creating, you know what I mean? Then you have basically have an endless source of motivation. It also keeps you more more authentic, so you're less likely to like double back on yourself and end up contradicting yourself on anything too, or just you know like getting off track and losing sight of yourself. You know, like you you have to you have to take care of you in order to do anything first, and that's you know that's a tough lesson too. Sometimes a lot of us are conditioned to uh, look to take care of others before we take care of ourselves almost to the point of where we end up, you know, not doing enough for ourselves, causing ourselves actual like pain and torment and time and everything. And at some point you have to realize it's that old adage of if you're on the, if you're on the airplane and it's going down, you have to put your oxygen mask on first before you can help anyone else. And the healthier you are in the better place that you're at, the more equipped you are to actually help other people. It's, it's so interesting that you bring that up because that's, that's been a, a bit of a, a recurring theme in, in the previous episodes. And um, it's, it's something that I've really learned myself recently, um, you know, like how it really is so important to help yourself first, because, you know, first of all, you're able to help other people so much better. And then also when you go out into the world, you know, you're so much less of a mess for, for other people to have to have to deal with. You don't have to put up with that person. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good point. Also, I mean, just, it also goes to what you say yes to is ultimately what's going to take your time up too. So sometimes you have to say no to things in order to have space to say yes to something better later on too. So you got to be careful with how far you're extending yourself. And I think with a lot of creatives, because what we do is a little bit undervalued, you know, like people don't either either don't want to pay for art or think they can get away with pay, not paying for art. You know, they, people want to have you do things for free. And if it's a great idea and you're really on board with it and it's not going to take up that much of your time, that's your own choice to do. But the second you say yes to that, that time you can't use for anything else. So you have to be careful with where you're putting that sort of thing. And if you have limited time, and a lot of people want it, you got to raise your prices. Like, that's one of those things that I, I tell people, that, oh, but it's not fair. And it's like, you only have an hour to work on, you know, if you only have an hour or a couple of hours every week to work on commissions, your commissions better be expensive. If people are still asking for them, they should be somewhat expensive. That way you have time to make your own work and you have time to choose to say yes or no to them easier. But I mean, that's one of the harsh things that it's like, you have to have that self-value to do that. You know, like you have to understand what you're worth. If a bunch of people are clamoring for stuff for you, then you're worth something. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and then that generally means too, that you can raise your prices and, you know, still get, um, still get like the commissions and the work. And uh yeah. I don't really do commissions myself. Like I haven't for some time because I did, I did work for somebody else for some time, but I actually, I really like doing my own work right now. And then collaborating with people based on ideas or a little give and take play type of a thing. 
or having somebody take over a portion of stuff that I don't like doing business-wise, like that's more the type of collaboration I end up doing more often right now, but. Cool. Yeah. I think that's kind of like the, the living the dream and uh, I'm, I'm hoping to get there eventually with, uh, with the book stuff in the, uh, um, in the show. I, I guess, I suppose I just need to, to, to push it a little bit more, but um, I figure it'll get there. Got to yeah. start somewhere. I also did, as I've been making, you know, I make enough to support the hobby itself, right? To support my art, art supply addiction. <laughs> so that's what it kind of is. Uh, because new art supplies make you want to make more stuff. So it's just, you know, it's, it's self-motivation. It's just a little, you know, it's a little incentive. Uh, but I actually, I actually paid for classes this year for Skillshare. And I didn't think, I'm like, oh yeah, they have commercials on a lot of artists, YouTube videos. And I, I had taken the trial memberships, like I'd taken a trial membership for like three months and learned a couple of things on there. But I'm like, I'm actually going to take the time. I'm going to take a couple of like longer classes. And I've gained so much information and so many more places that are opportunities that I didn't know existed. Wow. And, I, and it could have taken me hours of YouTube searching just to find that same information. You know, like I, I'm not guaranteed that I would have found somebody doing the same topics. Yeah, you know, it was hmm. a lot kind of a little bit pre-digested, pre-chunked up for you, you know, in, in places where you can take classes on it. So I do recommend if anybody has a little extra, you know, funds to put towards their business is, is learning sometimes. Yeah. Like self, self-investment. Yeah, exactly. So I put that self-investment in and there's, there's definitely some things that are going to be kind of coming down the pike as things as things get better and as I get more free time, as my kids get older, stuff will adapt and change and I'll be growing and pushing different small streams of income, you know, like I have the current ones that I do and I'll probably branch out into other ones, you know, and start doing larger projects like a, like a kid's book. Cool. So awesome. That's <laughs> onward so, and up. More slots. <laughs> more slots. More slots for all. I love it. Um, so I want to get into um, uh, another superpower of yours, and um, I, I guess like it, it's really interesting because I, I can see how they're they're all like kind of like interwoven with you, like how like like really how they they work together in tandem. And um, so I, I was actually realizing that I, I probably should have kind of started out with how you and I met. And um, so I think another one of your your superpowers is that um, like you're very warm and, and inviting and accepting like there's no um like there's no there's, there's no need to like you know you, you can be yourself around you like with no problem um, I was told I'm, I'm very I I have no gatekeeper type tendencies you know <laughs> like <laughs> like I don't keep people out of fields I'm like get on in here you too you know <laughs> yeah it's and it's 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 really apparent too with, with all the community building you do. I think it's great. Yeah. I mean, I love, uh, I love people getting together to do things that are, uh, that are positive and uplifting and creative and entertaining and, you know, that we can be truthful and vulnerable with each other with and, you know, like just all the, all the good parts of humanity that we can, we can help each other grow and support each other a little bit. I love that stuff. And there's really nothing that a human can really be starting out, you know, like nothing inborn that you're born with or nothing that can happen to you. I think medically that should prevent you from being part of that and you know like hanging out and communicating and that's the one thing that I like sometimes I think about that it's like I'd love to be able to communicate better and like I want to learn all the languages but I don't have the time or the brain <laughs> right now <laughs> well yeah I I think communication is is definitely a super important superhero skill that I need to work on myself um and I, well, I guess it's it's kind of interesting too how you know I use my writing, you use your art. 
as like, you know, one of our forms of, of communication. Oh yeah. And, uh, and I think that's partially, that might be part of the reason why I have animals in there so much too, is to kind of to, like that they're, everybody has a favorite animal, you know, like, and animals are not as complicated as people are they're easier to get along with you know people love <laughs> dogs and dogs and cats for a reason because you know what you're getting with them you know like and that's kind of something that everybody can relate to and somebody that could something that pe all people can find themselves in in a lot of different things the way we characterize different animals i mean like i have my sloths that are you know they're slow and they kind of get along with things and you know <laughs> they just kind of hang out you know they, they go swimming i, I went recently swim pretty fast actually so they're not that slow <laughs> i think that's a um i think that's a great question too for for anybody listening to to post in the comments like what what is your favorite animal um yeah. for me what do you love you have a weird if you have a weird like uh factoid about them i am i'm listening <laughs> yeah let's let's get some animal factoids that sounds like a lot of fun yeah well what's your favorite mike um <laughs> so that's actually a good question i'm not really sure i've i've always been fascinated with with the whale shark um oh they're cool and <laughs> i i like sharks i like whales um but i'm not sure if i have a particular favorite animal because i just i find all of them so fascinating and and you know like when i've thought it's hard I've, for one too yeah it's like my logo is a sloth i have too many i know there's so many like quirky animals too that you know i, I never knew existed you know uh, until recently and i'm like whoa that animal is like so cool you know, it's just like there's there's such an endless variety of 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 animals and um and that's why you know in my book too like I, a really big part of it is being good to the environment and you know being good to animals because they they're so cool like they're so fascinating and just so fun to learn about oh my god i just uh i dove into i started learning a little bit about sea slugs recently and you would think <laughs> like okay, they're slugs, that's disgusting, right? Like, that's what we immediately associate. We're thinking like garden slugs. Garden slugs are kind of cool too, don't knock them. There's there's more there than you think. But sea slugs are these little slugs that live on the ocean floor and there are all sorts of different crazy colors of them. They've got like neon colors and spots oh. and little feathered appendages on their back. They have like antennas and like little, little oh my things goodness. that they carry on them. And there's one I just did a doodle of recently that's one of the only creatures on the planet that can eat algae and then use the chloroplasts in the algae to actually photosynthesize energy. My goodness. So they can take the plant superpower and turn it into their own. Like, wow. Like, that's nuts. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, so cool. Are what I like, that's literally what gets what gets me going are those little like factoids and learning about like how all these animals do things that you don't think should be possible based upon your narrow understanding of the world you know like your yeah. understanding gets opened a little bit more every time you realize that you know i think that's a really good lesson um because it is it is so easy for us to kind of uh box ourselves in and box in our understanding and, and start to think that you know we we know everything and that, that there's not really any any surprises left in, in the world for us and um oh. you know that that couldn't be more untrue um and you know so you can just look into outer space or but i mean even like with earth like there's the so much that we don't know about we haven't been to the bottom of the ocean yet right we haven't we haven't even gone there and it's on our own planet like <laughs> we and, what's and, down there? it could be anything <laughs> well, and all, all the crazy creatures too that they're that they're that they're finding you know deeper and deeper and deeper yeah it's it's crazy it really is that there's so there's so much out there to learn about and there's so much that's so much more complicated than you think it is and sometimes that helps me with humans too 
is I can have a sense of grace for other humans because I don't know how complicated uh, their situation might actually be. You know, so it's kind of, that's part of the reason why I have a little bit of that positive attitude or that accepting attitude is that like, I'm aware that things are rarely as simple as they seem. And that a lot of times, especially with people, I have to take what they're telling me is their experience as the truth for them, you know, like, and I can't possibly know really how, how their life really is with every little detail that's going on. I think it is um, really fascinating to think about how everyone has all like so many, like, you know, they have their own different story and it's, you know, a, like stories that are just filled with so much because, I mean, I just think about how, you know, my life, like growing up and all the things that happened to me and, you know, all the adventures I've had and gone through and, I, I've just thought about like how that's like completely different from, you know, like a person like sitting right next to me, like they have their own version that's completely different. And you know what I mean? It's, it's just, it's so fascinating. Like how many like stories there are out there. Yeah. There's infinite amounts of stories or infinite, infinite amounts of like cool little details that can expand your understanding of what life, what life on this planet even is, you know, like, so people are just as interesting as that. Like I do have my times where people's behavior is, is poor and it feels like they're not being their best. And that, and that hurts me to an extent because I'm so open to that sort of stuff. But I have to, I almost ultimately come back to that things are far more complicated than I can possibly ever know. That people are doing the best they can with what they have that I'm sorry that it's not better, but that there's not much I can do about it. And what I can do is to be weird and build the community of people whose behavior is being okay right now. And, you know, like bring a little joy and wonder and expand understanding in what little way I can. I, I think that's great. It's, um, it's just so interesting to me to think about how everyone really is like their own little universe. Yeah, we've got our own little universe and everybody is like a satellite in somebody else's universe, you know, like yeah. we've all got spinning around in different groups. And I always found that fascinating with where people like where groups connect to each other, you know, like who's the linchpin that goes from, you know, like ultimately in high schools, you always had the cliques and there were the people that could pass in between certain cliques, but then couldn't pass in between other ones. Like that, they met that that's the wall, you know, for them. And it's, yeah, it's bad. That, that was, really a, that was, that was definitely me. I was, I was, I was definitely like the, or the, the click orbiter. I was the, I was in a group of some pretty, like, some pretty weird people. But also, I the class valedictorian is my is my friend, <laughs> and I got along with a good chunk of the popular people too. That I some of them that I'd known since uh since like grade school and kindergarten, and so I I got along with a good subset of people. And if I could get next to like standing next to somebody in a casual environment, usually I could get them to like relate to me, and I could actually get hellos and acknowledgement out of them afterwards like it's it's a skill you definitely have to figure out what you can talk about with people well i think that uh, um goes back to like the super <laughs> i think it goes back to to the superpower that, that we're talking about with with how you know warm and accepting and, and inviting you are like you you make it very easy to talk to you yeah and i don't know i that might be, I was about to say, I don't know where that comes from, but then it might be because I'm a middle child. I have an older brother and a younger brother. I'm the only female and linchpin in between, you know, <laughs> to either keep them from fighting with each other or to join up with one to fight the other. Uh, <laughs> you know? So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of being a middle child that kind of uh, makes you capable of, uh, 
some conflict resolution, some, you know, being able to communicate with two completely different people, you know, that are also different than you because I was the only girl, you know? So it's interesting. I get along, I get along with guys. Great. Actually get along with women. Great. Uh, because, uh, but for a while there, you know, having two brothers, I didn't get along with other girls as well because I was so used to, you know, <laughs> poor, poor attitude. <laughs> I've come around to it. I love my feminine peeps, you know, and all the people in between. Let me add that in there. So I got, I got friends all over, all over yeah. the spectrum. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I mean, well, I, I think that's really a, a testament to your, to your personality and, warm and kind and accepting nature and um yeah i think that's a really uh fantastic superpower yeah I'm, well thank you <laughs> i've i've worked on it <laughs> it's partially it's, a survival mechanism and partially work <laughs> um i i i i think i can i can somewhat somewhat relate you know it's 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 not always easy for sure um yeah. Yeah. It's because I don't know if, if this, well, it's probably is similar for you too, but, um, I, I oftentimes have people that, uh, you know, like just even when I'm first meeting them, just tell me like their life stories. And like, sometimes okay. I need to like figure out how to ration that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I do that occasionally too. It's kind of like an info dump of like, let me give you everything so that you can decide whether you want to deal with me or not, you know, like, and I have to, I have to stamp that, you know, take that back a little bit sometimes. And sometimes I have to, I have to step back from other people a little bit so that I can kind of like absorb everything at once. Cause I really do want to be paying attention when people are talking, but I've got that kind of, you know, chaos monkey, it's it's possibly an attentive ADHD as well, a, a highly daydreamy type of a person that loses whole chunks of time, uh, you know. So like, I like to make sure that I'm actually paying attention when other people are around, and that's what I think feeds into like being an introvert as well too. Is that I only have so much bandwidth to be able to deal with social situations, so I yeah. need a certain amount of downtime to to process it, to make sure that I understood it well and that, you know, and to be ready to absorb more. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I, I think you vocalized how, how I feel because I, I feel really appreciative that, you know, people that I've just met are able to oftentimes like just dump like all these like really personal stories, you know, and feel, feel free to, um, maybe dump is the wrong word, but, you know, like relay, you know, like these really personal stories and uh, feelings and all that. And, you know, even though we, we just met, they feel comfortable with me, but at the same time, you know, it, it can oftentimes honestly be overwhelming and, um, oh, yeah. and, and they, they usually like to go on for, you know, sometimes hours. And um, like, I, I just kind of get, get a little, a little <laughs> mentally burnt. So you've got that accepting thing too, and that warmth, and that comes from like a sense of empathy that you, that you can kind of, or either empathy or sympathy, that you can either relate to what they've, they're feeling, what they're expressing that they felt, you know, like that their, their vulnerability in the situation, like, oh yeah, I've been in a similar situation before, or I know that emotion, you know, like, and that you can almost feel it a little bit yourself while they're talking, like you actually feel a little pain for them, uncomfortable, even a little embarrassed because you know it's vulnerable that they're telling you that. And I feel like people can sense that a lot of times. And it's that, you know, that nature that allows people to be able to like pour that out to you. But it also, it takes, it takes energy. It takes energy to, to sit and receive that, you know, like, and to respond in places like appropriately you know, and not just like run screaming because you've, you know, <laughs> you've had, you've had too much. Uh, I love those times where people are willing to share uh, stuff that's hard, you know, stuff that's, that's tough to handle and to deal with. I, I kind of like honor, I honor respect. I feel rewarded by that. 
uh, but also I do have to, I have to protect my energy sometimes too. And when I was younger, I was much worse at protecting my energy. I was all in listening to everybody's thing and giving advice and everything. And I, I, I have, I have a little bit more boundaries now and it helps, it helps me be like we said, to be the best you, you can be in order to help people as best you can. So if I'm constantly giving, you know, you can't, you can't pour from an empty cup. Absolutely. That's, one my, that's one of my sayings lately. Like when I, when I have a downtime and I'm not making as much, you know, or I had a day where I'm not doing anything and I don't really want to try to find something to like post to Instagram. Sometimes I'll post something like just a generalized little thing or an old piece. And I just, you know, I'll actually say today's, today's a down day. Uh, can't pour from an empty cup. So here's an old cup <laughs> with some residual juice in it. Enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> I, I like that though. I, I think that's important. Um, and um, I, I actually, I guess I do something kind of, kind of similar too, where um, we do uh, um, sometimes like, well, people like will come to me for help or, or, or whatever. And um, instead of, you know, spending a lot of my time, and maybe this isn't so good, but maybe it is. Um, instead of, you know, uh, um, spending my time up front listening to them, I like, I link them to like a, like a resource or, you know, well, I mean, of course I gotta listen, but, uh, um, you know, if, if they're looking for like some kind of solution, like I'll, I'll send them to a resource and, um, to see like if they're, if they're really serious about it and, um, and if they check out the resource, then we can go to the next step. But if they don't, then, you know, I, I just kind of don't. They, they were just at that stage where they needed somebody to just listen to them. You know, like maybe they're just not ready to make any change yet. And when they yeah. are, they have that resource or they might still have links saved or they might have like, you know, saved yeah. it somewhere and they'll back to it when they are ready. And you can only meet people where they are is one right. of those things. Trying to remember that it's like, I can't fix everybody as much as I would love to. I can't even fix myself. So I really shouldn't do that. But, uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I used the, the wrong word like when I said listening because I'm I'm definitely you know generally willing to to listen, but you know sometimes like people like ask me for help, you know just I mean for example like someone will ask me for help, oh you know like uh, like how do I do copywriting or, or how can I how can I work from home like like you do, and um, you know instead of spending a lot of time explaining, I'm like, oh, well, let's check this out. Check out this resource first. I think this is a good, a good place to get started, and, you know, and then we can go from there. And then if they don't check it out, then I know they're not really serious about it. Yeah. That's, that's more what I mean. Uh, yeah. Mine for people, at, oh, how can I work from home as an independent artist like you? I go, well, it helps to have a husband that's making a full salary and has health insurance through work, you know, like, because technically I'm in, I'm in a position of privilege. Like that's not something everybody has. Now, given I do work on my marriage, my relationship is good. And that's one of the reasons I get away with being the weirdo that I get away with being is because there's a lot of communication and a lot of like listening and being, you know, allowing other people the space to be vulnerable and just listening to somebody when they want to be listened to, offering help when they want to have help offered to them, helping somebody else see a different perspective to things. And that should absolutely include your significant other in there you should be as much as community building is fun with artists community building is extremely important in my household like that's the yeah. number one where we have to know that we have each other's backs that whatever we're facing we're facing together that any risk to one of us is something that the rest of us take concern over you know and that's how you kind of you have to build those layers of your life and try to be as as real as vulnerable as you can be with other people as willing to listen you know and then also still protect your energy it's it's a it's a weird again yeah life's so complicated i can't <laughs> it's really hard to judge other people <laughs> it's really hard to judge myself though i'm trying to learn that i'm really trying to learn that I'm sure it. Uh, I'm sure it helps too with your um, communication with your husband or relationship with your husband that that he gets unlimited sloths. Yeah, yeah. He's not a huge sloth fan though. He's oh, like, no. 
Oh, well, I'm sure you can do uh, Packers art for him. I could do Packers art for him. A lot of Aaron Rodgers with different facial hair patterns. Yeah, I'm, be- I'm sure that would soften a lot of a lot of blows or whatever. I'm sure, that go a long way. Of Aaron Rodgers, and I could put like a clear, uh, like a clear acetate over it, and people could draw the facial hair they want on there. <laughs> he, he could be throwing a football to a sloth that's like going deep. Yeah, going deep. But it's like that's uh, the thing that I've been working on the most lately, I think, is like that kind of uh, self judgment, you know, like you're talking about artists not being able to deal with their own work, you know, like and being self critical. Uh, that goes that goes deeper on a little a lot of really sensitive people that we're constantly wondering if like we measure up to anything or giving ourselves a hard time for doing like little mistakes here and there and so like I also have to realize sometimes my life is complicated enough that I shouldn't judge myself (laughs) it's hard like having having that relationship with yourself um that's really what I've been working on the last few years and uh trying to you know make it a little bit better (laughs) I gotta be nicer to me that's what I talk about amount of the time it's like I gotta be nicer to me because honestly I don't deserve that like I uh the perspective shift that like one of them that really helped me is the the talk that you do to yourself inside your head would you allow somebody to say the same things that you say to yourself to a trusted friend or family member like somebody that you love like would would I let somebody talk to my kid that way or my husband that way or, the answer, or even you yeah if the answer is no then I shouldn't put up with it from me you know to me from myself right <laughs> oh my. yeah it's like what, what I what I really want to be friends with myself it's like huh you know maybe not you know yeah. and start, start working on that uh, um I thought like that language I see used to talk to ourselves yeah. And it's like, uh, you know, like, why am I not getting anything done? Gosh, I keep minutes up that I can never do like big projects or whatever. I always fail at these things. Why do I try? And it's like, would I tell even a stranger that, you know, would I discourage <laughs> anybody doing anything that they are good at and, you know, have a joy from just because they might stumble a little bit during it and that's like that's a solid no so like what am I doing to myself man like I gotta (laughs) I gotta be nice to me yeah well I think even being aware of that self-talk is uh, um is is so huge and and really what helps to um change it yeah it's like once you can identify it sometimes you can even put a silly voice to it and that helps Cause then you're like, you're just, you're dumb and in your voice. Like you sound, you sound weird. I'm not going. <laughs> I, I keep going back to that, uh, um, that idea from GI Joe where knowing is half the battle. Yeah. It's, like, it's so, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, it's, I think it, like, I, I'm not even sure if they really meant that message to be as profound as, as I think it is. Cause like, once you know something, then you can work on it. But like oh, it's, it's just, just putting that attention to it, that is so huge. Like once you're aware of things, you tend to notice them more often too. And I find yeah. that happens sometimes in like, uh, like even kind of like magical thinking, like uh, people that like seeing cardinals because it seems like it's a reminder from somebody that's passed, you know, like, well, when you're looking for cardinals, you'll see cardinals. And that's not to say it's not a message from somebody who passed, but that's your memory giving you a cue to like, go indulge for a minute, you know, like that's magic, you know, but when you, when you learn things, when you listen to people and you gain, you know, more nuance and perspective and everything, you start seeing things that you didn't notice before. And I think that's, that's really great being, you know, being the chaos monkey that I am. Like you're just giving me more things that I can smash together, you know. <laughs> you're giving me more connections I can make that then make weird art out of. So I think I'm really, I really, I vacillate between really loving humans and humanity and and being like completely disgusted by us sometimes. But 
but most of the time it's that you know especially in better circumstances than we're currently in but uh you know like it's usually like that kind of sense of of wonder because they're always doing weird stuff they always have something new for me yeah if, if everyone yeah. was if everyone was, was perfect it would be pretty boring they would be real boring there'd be no no excitement no drama it'd be good if, if they could be nicer to each other and right. just and just as weird yeah <laughs> i i agree that's that's where i'm trying to move the needle towards like you can be as strange as you want as long as you're nice to people and concerned with community and people's like health and safety like you can be as weird as you want <laughs> I, I, I think that's a, a great way to live by. Exactly. And that's why I like artists. Most of the time, they're, they tend to be that way. Also, a lot of writers are that way, too. It's just the, the creative mindset. Because you're constantly learning new things in order to be able to write about them. Or make art with them. I, I, I completely agree. And so... Um... And so I, I have uh, two more questions for you. Okay. And so um, we're going to get to to my favorite part of the show. And um, that is, what superpowers do you think I have? Oh, geez. Well, you are, you are also like highly approachable. It's one of the reasons why we got along like immediately. You also have that kind of like, it's not like really a childlike sense of wonder. It's the I'm trying to find the right word for this. The lack of inhibition, like the adult inhibition that makes people be serious all the time and not and, and forget what it means to play. Like you are immediately, you immediately read as playful just just in like day-to-day -day interaction life that you're moving around you know just the way you move just the amount of physical activity that you do you read as playful and that is that's definitely something that's approachable because people know that if they do something silly they're not going to get judged because you know we're, we're already silly <laughs> that I think uh, your ability to to communicate with with kids especially is uh, definitely a superpower you have a way of getting down on their level that isn't it isn't pretentious you aren't like holding on to too much of like your identity as an adult when you do that you meet them where they are frequently and that's impressive. I even struggle with that. I'm a playful person and I'm weird and I'm childlike, but I have those moments where I'm like, get down on the floor with you. Like, <laughs> like I'm getting down on the floor. Uh, <laughs> trying to think. What else? It feels like you're very, uh, you're adaptive to change. Well, that you seem to segue from one thing to another pretty well like with not as much uh, kind of like awkwardness or, or pain or struggle as some other people do. I think you transition well. Interesting. Because you've gone from like in, you know, like classroom settings, you know, like that have more rules to them and you, and you stay yourself in that, you know, like it didn't... <laughs> <laughs> you don't have customer service mic you know what i mean you don't have like teacher mic that's a mask that you put on you know and then you go you know you were you know when i met you you were coaching soccer you know and that and that's the same mic that you take into the classroom and that's the same mic you are right here so it's like anything you do it doesn't seem like it's either you pick things that already suit you well or that when you transition, you don't allow yourself to get lost in like a persona that you feel like you have to take, put on. You're authentic. Well, thank you. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very allergic to rules that I don't think serve a good purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Same. 
uh, same. I like to say I have a healthy distrust of authority, but I also understand when rules make sense, you know, when things make sense and they make sense for the sake of a community or people's safety, I'm more likely to be hundred percent all on board. Let's get this stuff done. You know, I'll, I'll cheer for the rules if they make sense. If they don't make sense, I'm going to keep complaining about it and possibly bending or breaking them until they do make sense. <laughs> I, uh, um, wow. So I, I really appreciate all that insight. That's, that's very interesting to me to, to hear people's outside perspectives. What's I think, uh, I think you and I relate to each other because we share a couple of superpowers, like the, the playfulness and the kind of, uh, uh being accepting from the get go. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think too that, um, you know, we, we bonded like pretty much instantly. Yeah, it was like, oh, your kid's playing soccer, which one? And then you said, you know, and you're like, oh, she's you know, like, you're out there running with everybody. And I'm like, <laughs> he's just like a big kid. Like, <laughs> okay, that's who I, that's, that's what I like in people. I like people that know what they like and aren't afraid to get, uh, get excited about it you know like when people when you get people on their topic right or the things that they really get into and they read on and they go they get going and they get all excited that's my jam <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> my favorite part about humans it's like do you have a weird topic you enjoy yes tell me all about it i don't care if it's the topic i enjoy i want to watch you tell me why it's so interesting <laughs> and, and that's when you see the um like the real like childhood joy come out of them too where it's just like you know super expressive like all at once like you know uninhibited oh yeah that's why like my husband's not a big art person but he's a huge weather nerd and you want to talk to him about what the difference between different types of clouds are or like a watch versus a port <laughs> or how tropical storms form and just let him go like that's fun that's fun to watch man well, I, <laughs> I, I think that's a, a superpower too, then is, you know, help like the fact that you're able to kind of identify like what people's different, um, like avenues of, of interest are and, and helping them to, you know, get it out and, um, express it. Cause that's huge. And, and also being willing to listen to it, like being able to and listen I, to it. That's a huge deal. I feel like enthusiasm, especially like in, uh, when I grew up in like the eighties and nineties, it was to be cool meant to not be overly enthusiastic about something because that showed somebody where your weakness was and you had to be kind of detached and, oh, that's nice. You know, but you couldn't show that you were really excited about something because otherwise people would make fun of it. And it didn't matter what it was. If you did something, anything too much, it was a whole thing. Uncool. And I think- yeah, it was uncool. And then I think adults tend to be like that as well, like because they've lost that sense of wonder and play and that sense of like that enthusiasm can be something uh, big and unwieldy and uncontrollable. And it's okay to lose control in a positive way, you know, like that you can you can kind of you can kind of be too much if it's for good, you know. And I feel people lose that. And the second I recognize that in another adult human being, I'm like, you're my people. Yeah, but you just, you just went too far telling me like how excited you are by this random thing or like, you know, you're, you're dressing all up and people that dress up in cosplay and go like all out. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. like I get, I get those people. I get the people that have, a lot of enthusiasm and aren't afraid to show it because that's a sense of bravery that you don't you don't think about absolutely you're leaving yourself vulnerable for ridicule you are brave i i think about that as as an introvert i'm like oh my goodness that's that's a terrifying idea and that's the thing i would think that you know like i'm a little bit i was always like more shy growing up a little bit less shy now. I've got I've gained social skills. I'm still an introvert. I still hit the wall and I can't be out and around people. 
And I still have a little bit of that fear that my enthusiasm is too much or somebody is going to make fun of me for it. But then I realized they're going to make fun of me for not as well too. You know, like what if I go my entire life and never make the weird crap that makes me happy just because somebody else is going to like make fun of me for it. That's going to be, that'd be a really sad life. That would be uh, more tragic than almost anything I can think of if I let the fear of being ridiculed keep me from doing fun stuff. Right. And if, if someone's making fun of you too, that's, that speaks more about them than about you. And it's, it's usually because of some kind of issue they're facing because you, people that are not. happy with them, people that are happy with themselves, like, you know, don't say mean things to other people generally. Yeah, exactly. And so it's like, that's, I feel like that's an act of rebellion in and of itself is to be unapologetically into what you're into. And I respect yeah. that, that from other people. And that's something I immediately latch on to with other human beings. And I get better at it every year because, you know, frankly, every, every woman over 35 hits like a, don't, don't give a crap, you know, like it, it slowly starts increasing. Like sometime in your thirties, you start dropping a bunch of stuff that you just don't care about anymore. <laughs> Well, because it, it takes up so much energy to, to try to care what other people think. Oh, God, yeah. And then I can use that energy for, for other things, or I can choose to use it for nothing at all. And that's the ultimate rebellion is to slow down in a world that wants you to go super fast. I, I completely agree. I'm, for myself personally, I've, I've been putting the brakes on everything hardcore and just like just pulling back and just actually, I've, I've been working on what, what I call a pull list, and it is all the different things that are trying to pull me in different directions. Yeah, and that way you can, you, you know where the gravitational forces are so that you know what directions you can move in easier, and then you can be more conscious about what, how you spend your time and your energy. Well, yeah, and, and also so I can get rid of them. Yeah, it's like, it's, just now, gone. So, so many things that so many things that pull me in, in different directions are are just pointless that they're like they're just like they they're, they're just things that have like built up in my mind that seem like they're important to pay attention to but they're actually not yeah yeah and that happens a lot we've got a lot of like there's a lot of distractions in the world so it's good to like kind of pare down to what's really important what matters what you can affect and what you enjoy and I mean, that's just, you know, crafting a life and that's, you know, it's a lifelong process crafting a life. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's good to, um, I mean, just as you, as you're mentioning, you just like pull back. And, um, and so for me, I guess mine is, mine is a little bit dramatic and, um, this is actually probably a whole different conversation, but, uh, um, uh, which I'd love to have at some point and maybe we, maybe we should get like a panel together for it. But like, I'm really trying to actually just pull back from everything pretty much and start at, at ground zero and then just start adding back like a little by little, like what, like what are like the actual, like really important things and meaningful things? Yeah. I mean, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I had that a little bit with, you know, uh, just the quarantine process where it was, you know, not quarantine or lockdown or whatever the heck it was where, you know, kids came home couldn't go into work, had to decide what to do with that time, you know, like did have obligations with, you know, keeping them on, you know, virtual school and stuff like that. But it was, you had to like reassess where am I at with things? What am I spending my time on when I have free time? What am I doing with it? You know, like, yeah. And right now I'm at a, I'm at a weird transition point with starting a new school year. So like, I'm looking at if I do have free time right now, I'm not starting to build anything right now because I know I can't sustain the push on it. And I have to, the way my focus works because it's so fractured sometimes is it has to be something I'm into. And then I can push that like real hard and fast and I can get through like smaller projects or even a bigger project. I can do that sustained push. If I know I'm going to get interrupted 15 million times and I'm going to get pulled in like, a week or two weeks 
then there's no point in starting things right now. And that the free time I have, I can and should take to rest and to kind of center myself and do a little bit of planning, but ultimately not to be doing, not to be just doing, doing, doing for the sake of doing things. It's putting the, it's putting the, the oxygen mask on. <laughs> Take the time to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, I well, actually, you know, I did include that in my book, but it's not something that I've talked enough about, honestly, the, the importance of um, needing to relax. And, um, and honestly, the importance of um, needing to pull back. Um, I think... Um, yeah, I, I think what I'd really like to do is because uh, this is this is stuff that, that I really want to expand on sometime um, in the future. And um, I'm I'm actually really trying not to have these uh, interviews be um, too, too long, because I know for me, I, if I see yeah. something is like yeah. three hours, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I'm like, uh, three hours. Uh, well, I, we'll I don't keep, know. We'll keep forever if you let us because I know. Here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, um, and which is which is awesome, um, you know, and which is great. We could make a part two later. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, um, yeah. So yeah, let's 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 think about that for sure. And because uh, one thing that's been talked about with some other guests too is is creating a panel with uh, um and bringing on like certain guests, you know, and, and talking about you know certain topics, which I think would be really cool. Um, but uh, um, so. I think what what I'd like to do, yeah. So I think I think it would be um, good to good to wrap up because um, I think we we've covered a lot of ground and like there's oh, a lot to think about. Um, yeah, I'm thinking so, back. Uh, oh, okay. Being kind to yourself, self care, but also like, yeah, it's just like so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the artist community, um, you know, being accepting to other people. Um, we, Absolutely. We, Find your tribe if you can. You yeah. Know? There's going to be a little drama because it's humans involved, but find your tribe. You know, yeah, you get so, to participate in the in the other stuff. But <laughs> so this is this is kind of perfect too that that you're listing all that off because the final question that I have is, um, what tips do you have for for, for budding superheroes, um, for for our budding superheroes? And uh, um, so I think you just mentioned the whole bunch of important ones. Yeah, yeah. It was a good take, summary. Take care of yourself. Be aware of what you're saying yes to and where you're placing your time. Uh, find your tribe, find your people. Uh, don't let anybody dull your sparkle. You know, continue, you know, be overly enthusiastic about the things that you like. Uh, if you feel like you're taking too many books out of the library about frogs because you're fascinated about frogs and somebody shaming you into it, take out twice as many books about frogs. <laughs> Like, just stick it to them, you know? Like, learn everything you can about them, you know? Become a frog. I don't know, you know? Do frog makeup. Just just make it, just get into it as much as you want to. Everybody's going to have an opinion. And the one that matters is yours. For your Absolutely. Own life. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, I love that so much. Um, yeah. So play and play is work. You know, like if you're if you're learning how to be an artist and you're playing with different materials, that's work and that's skill building. You know, skill building doesn't have to be boring. It can be fun and it can be messy. And I promise you, if you keep doing it consistently, you'll get better. It's one yeah. of the only rules of the universe. If you keep doing something consistently, you will get better at it. There's that uh, there's that old saying too that every master begins a fool. That's that's one of my favorites. Yeah, I like to stay a fool because it's fun. <laughs> yeah, well, and and, and honestly, foolish. I was yeah. um actually as as I said that um I was thinking about how um you know so so there's def there's like different paths of, of development you know through like you know like through different like philosophies and um, even like some in psychology, like ego development. And um, it's kind of interesting that um, you have the master, but then after the master, actually usually the master becomes a fool, like so to speak, where 
where the master actually realizes that the master knows nothing and just basically like laughs about how much they know nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, that's, that's absolutely true. I think it also, it helps sometimes with me. And this is like, where we go on off on another one is uh, there was <laughs> a that your knowledge, right. Of the world, if you took it and it formed a circle, right. The circumference of that circle is what you understand that you don't know. Right. It's what you're aware of that you don't know. If you take your knowledge and that knowledge circle expands, you're aware of more that you don't know. So the smarter you get, the more knowledge you get, the more you realize how much there is that you have to learn. So you end up being less sure of your intelligence a lot of times and less sure of your knowledge. The smarter you get and the more you gain because you're aware of so much more than that little, you know, that little round. Your I world It's the only reason why I'd want to be immortal is to learn everything. And that's <laughs> and I don't even know if my brain could hold it all. <laughs> I, I think um I think one thing that I'm realizing too is that oftentimes things that I thought I knew, I I didn't even actually know that as well. You know, it's, it's, a, um, you know, there's, there's just so many, so many different angles and so many different um, yeah. things for us to learn. And, and that um, for me personally, like, I'm not even so much concerned about trying to try to like learn everything and more just focus on um, having fun and, you know, the experience of, exploration and curiosity and like playing like right. playing within that yeah yeah sometimes it's uh so, sometimes it's not like learning everything even it's just like I'd like to read every book <laughs> <laughs> like like if I could if I could live forever just to read every book because by the time I got done reading all the books people would write more books and then I would still have to read those like yeah. so there's no end to that there'd be the continuous supply yeah yeah that's why I get sad about like the burning of the library of Alexandria that I'm like, those are books I can never read. <laughs> well, maybe you'll find a book that will help you uh, go back in time and then you can go read those books yeah. too. I can read all of them. <laughs> oh, that'll be the one saddest part of it. It'll be in my obituary. The, the, her biggest regret is that there are books that she hasn't read yet. <laughs> I didn't get there. Uh, nobody can get there it's and that's and that's the joy of it all is that we're constantly creating and that we're constantly growing and we're constantly making things and reflecting upon what we see and that's that's beautiful we're the universe experiencing itself yeah that's that's where the real excitement comes in yeah exactly that's fun times i wish we could all not worry about the stupid stuff and just have the fun times <laughs> That's that's what I'm working on. Less and less yeah. of, of worrying about stuff, and uh, I mean, some stuff you do have to, of course, pay attention to. But yeah, trying to yeah, only only the important stuff. Yeah, but and that includes art and writing and play and exploration, and those are important things too. Just because they seem childlike doesn't mean they're any less important. Absolutely, completely agree. Go. All right. Well, we'll got to cut it short. We did another, we did another segue again. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, this is all such fascinating stuff. Um, and so Casey, thank you so much for, for, for joining me today. I really appreciate you coming on. It was really nice to catch up with you. Oh yeah. At the same. Yeah. You know, you're always welcome. Shoot me a message. We'll shoot the, you know, shoot the bullet. Since we're, since we're uh, both introverts, it doesn't matter that there's big gaps in between messages. We'll still get right back on the topic because the context is there. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny you say that because that's actually how it works in my brain too. Like it could be months since I've talked to somebody, but it's like still, you know, like the exact same relationship and, and conversation. Especially if it's in like text or a messenger, I'm like, okay, where were we at again? Okay. 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 I got it. All right. <laughs> You know, <laughs> there's a placeholder there. I can't do that on the phone. 
that's un- that's <laughs> I lose that. <laughs> that's that's his, that's his own conversation um like yeah. me me in the phone that's its own uh, that's his own spiel but uh yeah. um, phone's bad text good <laughs> i completely agree i i avoid the phone like the plague text good because i have a record of what i said too so that i know i didn't embarrass myself or i know that i did <laughs> <You know? laughs> i'm sure of what i've done yeah, chaos monkey sometimes gets out of control and gets out of the cage. <laughs> I I completely understand. Um, well, yeah. So, well, thank you, yeah. thank you again so much for 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 coming on and and sharing all your um all, all your wisdom and, and all this um uh, um like all the great information about um being an artist and having an artist oh. community. Uh, I that that was so insightful. Um, People can come find me on TikTok. I'm sure you'll have my link for my beacons which has like all my social media on it and like shops and whatever you can see what i make i'll give you some art pieces too to show but uh people can come find me come have a conversation do add a video with me on on tiktok or whatever or just you know leave a comment maybe i'll reply in video form too because i'm weird like that and uh yeah it's all good times over there it's really it's really not a high judgment area in that zone <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, we'll we'll get all your information um, in the description of, okay. of the YouTube video. And uh, yeah, check out Casey. She's awesome. And uh, um, definitely. The feeling is cool. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much. And uh, thank you so much, audience, for, for, for tuning in. And uh, um, as always, I hope you have a great day and a great every day. And um, take care.